sometimes big sacrifices have to be made in the garden. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the garden. Welcome to a time lapse. Here's me trying to put the cucamelons up on the trellis. They got away from me a little bit. You already saw that I pulled the kale over out of that left hand corner and I decided to go ahead and plant some seeds. Experimenting with a mid July planting event. Well, oh, camera fell. <laughs> Leaving that in. Welcome back. Never mind the OOTD. And look at this kale that I harvested. This is my first year growing kale. It was an impulse buy. And to be honest, I haven't done anything with it. So it was time for a sacrifice. And since I'm sitting here on the steps before I do a tour of the garden, I thought I'd just show you how I keep my seeds. None of these ideas are original. I got them from the internet somewhere. So this is all my small seeds. Well, not all, I have four of these. Only two of them are full. Um, anything that's small and likes to roll away or you might lose is in these little individual containers. Therefore, I think it's called diamond paintings or I don't know, that craft where you take a little pin and you stick a diamond and then you put it on Anyway, that, the, that's what this is supposed to organize. Um, and then for the bigger seeds, like cucumber, watermelon, these are photo cases. Um, you could probably get away with keeping the bigger seeds in these. You just won't be able to fit as many per cell and you might have to have more of these. So I wanted more options for growth. So like I said, I found these ideas on the internet somewhere and it's been the best so far. I tried an old CD case. I tried um, a three ring binder with like um, like baseball card sleeves. And so far this has been the easiest, quickest, keeps everything dry type situation. So with that out of the way, let's do a tour. It's been a while. I, uh, the video I posted last week was my birthday surprise about the monarchs. And currently I have five monarchs, the two that I got so excited about on the video. And I found three more yesterday. So all of them are inside. Let's start the tour. Ooh, look at this freshly cut lawn. Okay. So I harvested the potatoes out of this side and I think my downfall of this was that I wasn't sure if they were determinate or indeterminate. So I piled soil all the way up as high as I could every time it grew. And I think that that caused it to die. This side, I did not pile the dirt as high as I could due to limitations with the size of the bag, but they didn't die. So um, in any case, here's a picture of my little tiny potato harvest. This is all, whoa, excuse me wasp. This is all that's left of my zucchini plant. Um, vine borers came through and took it out. I was able to harvest one last zucchini, but if you notice, I still have baby flowers that are trying to do things. So I moved it away. Obviously this isn't a prepared garden area. I just kind of tried to separate the half that had a fruit still on it away from the original garden to see what would happen. So I'm hoping, cause I saw some uh, little nodes for roots, I'm hoping that it's rerooting here, which is why these haven't died yet. And uh, I don't know, we might get a surprise zucchini later on. We'll find out. I'm not sure if this clematis is going to make it. It has stopped growing. It's been super hot. I don't know that transplanting it when I did was the right idea. So we'll see. Number one, elephant ear number one got to go inside. It was not thriving. Does anyone know what happens when a squirrel comes back for their net? And it's a tree. Do they just like, oh shucks, and like go about their business? 
because I have like three of them in this bed. Like the acorn sprouted. What do the squirrels do? They just like forget it and like, oh, maybe next year. <laughs> My bumblebees are loving the bolted oregano. So many bees, honeybees, bumblebees, all the bees. Wish you could see it, the, the camera doesn't capture it. So the zucchini plant was here, got some remnants and uh, the vine borer damage was really bad and I hit a couple leaves with a mower once. So it was just time. Um, got some grass weeds that I need to pull out here and there. The bumblebees on this milkweed are insane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven there, and eight, nine, I think, right now, just over here. This is actually a weed. I didn't plant it here. I think I took a screenshot of what I identified it as, so I'll put that here. So yeah, when it blooms, it's really pretty, even though I didn't put it there. So I thought, well, sure. It's only a weed if you don't want it, right? So these two annual milkweeds are where I'm finding a lot of those monarch caterpillars. Let me see if I can find, yes. So right here, that is a monarch egg. They lay them one at a time. They can lay hundreds a day but they only do one at a time. So that's why I've been so diligent coming out here and looking all the time for caterpillars because I want to save as many as I can. And they're so, so, so tiny when they come out. So this is my butterfly garden. It's beautiful right now. I was worried I wouldn't have one with all the snow in the middle of summer. Long beans. These I was leaving to dry out and it looks like they have, so harvest those, let those dry out for seed. Um, cucumber plants are starting to decline. So I did go ahead and I put two more cucumber plants here because I want it to create shade. These long bean plants don't do a lot of shade. These are almost ready to harvest. This is for seed. This is for seed. Basically anything that went too far before I got to it, it's for seed now. This one might be just about right. Oh, there's a cucumber up there. I do have some seed cucumbers. Like if you see the orange, those are seed cucumbers. Over here, since I found a recipe I like to use the long beans, I went ahead and planted four more long bean plants. They only take like I don't know, 60 days, I think, to go to maturity. So we have plenty of time left in the grow season. And then I've been watching, you know, more seasoned gardeners on YouTube talk about experiment, experiment with your growing area. So I took the kale out right there to put lettuce and I was pretty intentional with where I placed the seeds. So hopefully I'll get four heads there. I put broccoli intentionally, unlike the driveway broccoli. <laughs> I have cilantro here, and once they start growing and sprouting, I might get some type of shade cloth to just kind of close pin across here to give it more shade in the afternoon um, to keep it from bolting prematurely. And over here, I sprinkled lettuce seeds just to kind of see, eh, you know, let's we'll see what happens kind of thing. Don't mind my grass, but holy moly, look at number two. Number two, that is as big as two of my heads. I freaking love it. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I really, I'm scared. Guys, there's so much grass because I'm scared to do anything near these because they're so pretty and I don't want to hurt them. And it seems like anytime I try to do like a vinegar solution, I kill the plant. So that's number two. Number three is also doing beautifully. A little less grass out here. Oh, got a new leaf. That's so exciting. I never thought I'd grow these. Close up on the cucamelons. 
So this is probably a little past its prime. I could probably pick this and do a quick pickle with it. But if you just wanna eat them like a snack out of the garden, you really want them to be young and tender. Mm, I don't know, I have a lot out here. Oh, I'm not looking where I'm filming again. This is more of the size for eating straight out of the garden. Just a little bit smaller, not quite as stretched out. And honestly, I'm not sure if I'll grow these next year. They're cute and they're fun and they're drought resistant and they're, you know, something fun you can just snack on. But aside from all of that, what am I gonna do, harvest them all and make quick pickles every time? Probably not. Maybe, I don't know. This planter toppled over in a storm and I just kind of picked it up quickly and shoved it back in here minus a level. I have no idea if those strawberries are gonna do anything. The dill's pretty much spent. I might try to figure out something different for it next year. Oh my God, there's a bunny in my yard. Peppers, talking about some peppers. I've had a really slow start with peppers, just I think because of all the rain. Um, these are like long sweet peppers. They're not as tangy as a bell or a banana pepper but maybe I'm harvesting them too early to, to have that tang that a bell pepper, or pff, I keep saying bell pepper, banana pepper. Um, I have no bell peppers yet. Maybe this will be one. Oh my, is that gonna be a little baby bell pepper? Oh my goodness. I do have some, oh, volunteer tomato plant. Look at you, doing your best. I thought I saw a fruit on it, yeah. Definitely cherry tomatoes. Oh, look, jalapenos. I'm trying to let these get good and, and big so they can be nice and spicy. Uh-oh, that one's got some uh, ridging, so maybe it's time. When your pepper starts getting these little ridges on it, that means it's getting to the point where the skin is stretching too far. And you don't want to let it go much farther than that because then it could open up and then bugs would go in and then you wouldn't get to eat it. So, I am a little sad that I have no bell peppers yet. I've also branched out and tried a bunch of different peppers this year. And I just noticed this one actually says sweet banana pepper. So that I'll leave on for a while and see what we can get. I think I saw one on this. Oh, there's another one right there. <laughs> Moving on. So I try to always let you guys see what I see, but I realized that in doing that, kind of takes away the, like the <laughs> pocket, pocket tomatoes. Kind of takes away the personability-ish stuff from making YouTube videos, so. What do you prefer? Do you want me to show you my view when I'm picking? Or do you want me to talk the whole time while I'm picking and you just listen and look at my face? Tomatoes are finally starting to take off. Got a couple that are getting pretty big. I'm actually not watering them like at all. That onion is probably ready. I should probably pull it. Anyway, um, I'm trying to stress these out a little bit and let them dry out because of all the rain that we've gotten. They really just haven't had a chance to do much of anything and I haven't been out here to prune lately. So I've got, look at this sucker that got away. This tomato plant confuses me. It seems to have a problem unfurling. But now that I've pruned it down pretty much to barely anything that had a problem unfurling, now it's actually got some stems and leaves that are doing what a normal tomato plant should do. <gasps> oh! Let go. 
That is blushing. We'll go put it in the window in the kitchen. I think I need a different pocket. That one's too big. Okay, so as I was saying, I every time I think, man, I mow the lawn and I stare at this plant because to me it just doesn't look healthy. But then I see new growth that is looking healthy and tomatoes up higher. Like these were the initial that I wasn't so sure about, one that I just picked. So I don't know. I guess I'm leaving it. <laughs> Obviously. I should probably do a better job at pruning. But look at all these. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Finally. Finally. Tree. What's happening? You guys mingling? I'm pretty sure these yellow leaves, if it's not Japanese beetles or flea beetles, it is white flies. I've done no pest control other than a little bit of diatomaceous earth here and there. Not frequently. Um, it's only on the lower branches, so not too concerned about it. That onion probably needs to come up. Got some weeds in here. Because I did not prepare for this video. I just decided to make it. Anyway, I think you get the idea. Sneak peek of the pumpkin plant up over the fence. Okay, and we have the back bed. We have watermelon and cucumber. Watermelon, watermelon. I think I planted way too many watermelons. <laughs> I pulled some weeds just before this video. And watermelon, watermelon, watermelon. <laughs> um, the soil or the compost that I put down is still pretty, it's retaining moisture. I'm not gonna say it's pretty wet, but it's retaining moisture. I pulled that yellow squash because I had accidentally sprayed it with the solution that I was trying to take out the flea beetles on the eggplants, which I have not successfully done. So I'm thinking that it got sprayed and then it also got some vine borer damage. So I pulled that out and I got two more zucchini, two more yellow squash. Also, I don't think the yellow squash was getting much sun. It was like right here. And the sun really doesn't start coming in here until about 10 o'clock, once it gets over this fence, 10 a.m. So hopefully it'll be better. Hopefully I'll get some more squash. It's kind of just another experiment for now. But I present to you the star of the show, the singular pumpkin plant. <laughs> this is my first year trellising a pumpkin plant. This is also a plant that I've had out earlier than last year when I did pumpkins. Uh, I actually had plants out, but my dogs could jump the fence that was around this bed and um, trampled my pumpkin plants for last year, so I had to start over. So this plant is much more mature than my plant last year, and it's already getting, I just pointed them out, females been so wet and so rainy that the females just start shriveling up before the flowers even get a chance to open to get pollinated. I'm hoping that that's the answer because I was successful with pumpkins last year. I got like five good pumpkins last year but they were on the ground and it was after I just kind of started ignoring them. Here's a good example where it shriveled up before the flower even opened and it'll never open now. It'll just start drying up and going away. So I got super excited to find females super early and now I'm sad <laughs> that they are not getting big enough to pollinate. I keep getting beautiful males that open and just the females just aren't doing good. So now that it's going to be dry for a little bit, maybe these females can uh, find it within their energy to hang around so that they can open and get pollinated. But look how long this thing is. All the way over there, all the way up the trellis and all the way down. It's just beautiful. Hey, it's future Diana, it's July 20th. I just had to show you how beautiful the pumpkin flowers are when they're in bloom. And they only bloom first thing in the morning. 
and by afternoon when I usually film my uh, videos, they're closed. So it's pretty, it's pretty magical first thing in the morning to come out and see bumblebees and beautiful flowers everywhere. Okay, back to the vlog. One last update for the back bed. These are zinnias um, along amongst the weeds and these are marigolds. So they're finally big enough that you can tell that they're not weeds. <laughs> that about does it. Um, things are doing good. I'm excited on my experiments. I'm excited for my monarchs. Um, thanks for coming back and watching another one and you'll see me next time.